Welcome back to another episode of Troubleshooting Python Machine Learning. Today, we're going to start a new section on troubleshooting advanced models like random forests and SVMs. In this section, we're going to look at four different problems that commonly pop up when you're doing Python Machine Learning. Number one, when you've trained a decision tree, how can you extract the rules from the decision tree and show it to non-data science members of your team. The second problem we're going to tackle is trying to find out which features are important in a random forest model. The third problem we're going to tackle is classifying with SVMs when your data has unbalanced classes. So what that means is in unbalanced classes you probably have one class that is the majority of your labels and one class which is the minority. So for example, if you have loan data, the majority of your loans are approved, but the minority of your loans needs manual review. The last thing we're going to talk about is computing true slash false positives and negatives after training any model in scikit-learn. Now that's very useful for you to evaluate again if your data has unbalanced classes or things like precision and recall simply cannot be a good score to your performance and you need a more in-depth assessment of your models. So this is what we're going to talk about today. In this particular video, we're going to talk about extracting decision tree rules from scikit-learn. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to fit a simple decision tree to the iris dataset. We then use an inner property of our decision tree model to extract the rules that decision tree has learned from the data. And we're going to construct what is called a visitor to go down the decision tree and gather all these rules so that we can visualize it and explain what's happening in our model. Let's go take a look. We're back in our Jupyter terminal. As usual, you can find all of these code files coming along in the code package in this in these series. First thing to do, we're going to import our standard libraries. So we have a trusty numpy. We then need a very standard train test split so that we make sure we're not leaking any information from one part of the data set to another part of the data set. We need the helper function that allows us to load the iris data set into our memory. We finally need, obviously, decision tree classifier so that we can perform, we can train a decision mo tree model on the iris data. Very simply, let's get the data into the data variable. So we say iris data, we load iris really standard and then we put x as iris data and then our target y we then use the standard train test splits to create sections of the data which we can properly train and test our model I'm putting the random state here as zero so that you can reproduce that at home. And all we need to do is all we need to do is type this again and then the random state would dictate how test sets is split from the iris data that we've loaded from sklearn. We then start a new model. Let's say we put max leaf nodes at three. And then again, random state, we put a zero. These two random states have no connection at all. This is just because random decision tree classifier also uses some stochasticity in its training stage. So having the random state is helpful for you to reproduce the model at home. And we simply do the standard Y train, X train fitting process. Very easy. So now the difficult part, or the part that this video is supposed to solve, is how do we then extract the decision rules from the decision tree classifier? So for those of you who come from more of an object-oriented programming background, you might recognize this. So this is 
a pattern called the visitor pattern. Basically, the idea is you send a visitor to each of the nodes of the tree, and then they find out what leaf nodes or child nodes this node has, and then send further new visitors down there. So the recursive function, and you basically only need to decide for the visitor how it can handle different types of nodes and the visitor because it always sends new visitors down child nodes it would then traverse the tree correctly so let's see how this works so let's define a new function called find ruse right and then for this we accept the tree which we assume is the model and we put the feature names so that we can recover what the feature names are instead of just numbers. The first thing to do is to find the decision tree using inner property of any decision tree model. So here what we need to do is say DT standing for decision tree. We assign it to the inner property tree underscore. We then define a visitor. So visitor goes to nodes and then it also keeps track of its own depth, i.e. how far has it traveled within the tree. For visual purposes, we first define an indent, right? So we say we'll indent our output with a space and we will use the depth to decide how many spaces we put in before we print out whatever node we're currently on. So if the current node is not equal to tree, so it doesn't equal to tree dot undefined. Actually, at this point, we need to import the definition of an undefined tree. So if the current node that we're visiting is an undefined, then we want to print out, let's say, we first put the indents here, then we say this is the condition. So if the feature here, and then we say it's smaller than. So what this does is we need to first say we indent the line. We then say this is the feature. And then we also need to round out the decision tree's threshold. Round it to, let's say, two decimal places. Good. And then we need to send a new visitor to the left node. And then we also mark that the depth has increased for the visitor, so the indents work correctly. And then we say this is the other branch. So again, we have the indent with the else. And then for that indent, we then put a visitor out for the right child. There we go. And then otherwise, if this is undefined, then it means that it's a leaf node. So all we need to do is say indent will return whatever the value of the node is, right? And lastly, the find root function, now that we have the visitor, all we need to do is say visitor, visit the first node, and the starting depth is one. So let's try to find some rules. So we find rules, we feed it a tree, and then we also feed it our feature names. There is data. So let's take a look at what happened here. So what happened was find rules took the model and sent a visitor into the top of a tree. The top of the tree is not a leaf node, so this part gets triggered. So it says if sepal length is smaller or equal than 0.8, we then return the first class. If sepal length is, if sorry, if petal length 
is smaller than or equal to 4.95 and return the middle second class. Otherwise, we return the third class. And that's all there is to it. So very conveniently, we're using the visitor pattern in object-oriented programming to send visitors down the tree. As the visitor traverses the tree of each node, it will decide whether it's a node or a leaf. If it's a node, it will send out more visitors down the node and then print out whatever the node contains, i.e. the condition that decides whether a decision goes left or right. And because we are tracing this down like how the decision tree model is going to make a decision anyway, we then get this very nice texture representation of how the decision tree is making its decisions. So that's all there is to it. We've just learned how to fit a simple decision tree model into the iris dataset. We then used an inner property of a decision tree model to extract some rules. And then we constructed a visitor pattern to recursively put a visitor down the decision tree and then depending on whether it's a node or a leaf outputs different textual representations of the rules that the decision trees has learned.